It's been 454 days since I started this project. Because lately there have been many changes that have influenced and can lead to some major changes in the ecosystem. We will see together what an ecosystem of this kind looks like. Where a filter is not used. The plants grow without the addition of carbon dioxide or fertilizers of any kind. And no water changes are made. On this YouTube channel, you can find detailed information about all the problems I encountered. This is the summary of the first year. Here is a tutorial about growing plants without carbon dioxide. And here is another tutorial about all the details of how I made this ecosystem. This is an experimental ecosystem. About 30 days ago, I decided to plant a series of new red plants to see which ones could survive without the addition of carbon dioxide or fertilizers. And because the light was low, I also increased the intensity of the light. From there, the ecosystem changed its course. The big problem of any aquarist is present here too. Algae. Although algae are more of an aesthetic problem, the cause of their spread are some deficiencies of the ecosystem. What deficiencies does this ecosystem have? It is difficult for me to list the ones I know because there are too many. But there are also deficiencies that I either do not know about or that can be proven with the help of tests in laboratory conditions. But starting from the basics, I try to eliminate the effects, the cause. In this case, being the high intensity of the light. There are already snails and shrimp in the aquarium that feed on algae. Because the algae were increasingly numerous, I decided to look for another option to keep them under control. Chemicals are excluded, so I looked for a natural organic solution. I oscillated between Amano shrimp, the best algae consumer in my opinion, and an algae consumer fish. Amano shrimp can have aggressive behavior if it is stressed or does not have adequate food, rich in protein. I was afraid for my red cherry shrimp and gave up on the idea of having Amano shrimp in the aquarium. So, I chose option number two. An algae-eating fish. The first choice was hillstream loaches. I always wanted this fish. I find its shape interesting. It is a peaceful fish, but the size of this fish and the necessary conditions for survival made me look for another option. So after long research, I chose this fish, Otto Dwarf Fish. It is not exactly a small fish, but compared to other algae-eating fish, it is quite small, reaching maturity at five to six centimeters in length. But this fish also requires some conditions to survive, which are not found in my aquarium in full. So I was afraid that it would not adapt. But it adapted well. I do not think I will have problems with this fish, but from time to time it must be fed with special food. Otocinclus catfish are herbivores, which means they primarily feed on plant-based foods. Their diet consists of algae, bacteria, and plant matter. But the main problem with this fish is that they feel good in large groups. 
I bought six fish of this kind. I think it matters a lot that the fish have good psychological comfort. Even if the conditions of the ecosystem may not be completely suitable for them. The aquarium is already crowded. Of course, the large number of fish in the aquarium affects the balance of the aquarium. Especially in the absence of a filter, but still 26 fish in 12 gallons of water. So after I planted the new plants, I increased the light intensity. But I also bought some fish to eat the algae. I also added two pieces of red moor wood, which I really like. But how do the plants look? I'll tell you straight up. The plants are doing much worse than they seem. The aquarium looks good because of the diversity of plants. But if we look at each plant individually, not a single plant looks like a healthy plant. I will only talk about the new plants with the caveat that all plants have changed their growth pattern. As I have shown and explained in this video, the nutrients in the water are insufficient for a large number of plants. I am very worried about this plant, Red Tiger Lotus. I cut off one or two leaves weekly that are trying to reach the surface of the water. I think this plant consumes the most nutrients. But you can still see the nutrient deficiencies in the water in this plant. I don't understand this plant. It consumes nutrients to send a young leaf to the surface of the water, while the larger leaves don't have enough nutrients. There are two Bucephalandra plants on this piece of wood. Both plants have lost a leaf. I don't know if it will adapt to the conditions in this ecosystem. Cryptocorin, Wendy Red. Leaves also have holes, but they have a reddish outline. This small plant, surprisingly, didn't want to grow, but suddenly, a few leaves unexpectedly grew. This video was taken a week ago. In the area where this plant grows, is there any connection between the food falling on the gravel and the rapid growth of some leaves? This plant has algae. It is not a problem for red cherry shrimp. But the leaves of the plant die. If many leaves die, eventually the plant will die too. I don't know what the shrimp prefer more, algae or plant leaves that melt in the water. The plants grow in the same pattern as last year. On the surface of the water, the plant looks good, seems healthy, is beautifully colored red. But the stem is thin and the leaves grow poorly or even die. I am convinced that after the number of plants is smaller, meaning some of the plants will die, the remaining plants will grow much better. So, I showed you that although at first glance the ecosystem seems healthy, in reality, there is a fight going on, a fight for the good. That is, the ecosystem regulates itself. You just have to give it time to do what it knows how to do. I believe that interventions in the aquarium should be as rare as possible and not on a large scale. 
Another interesting thing. I've gotten out of the habit of doing water tests. Instead, if I look in the aquarium, I can tell if something is wrong. The ecosystem being balanced, when something changes, there are no sudden changes. You just have to observe the plants, snails, shrimp, fish, and you quickly realize when something is wrong. This doesn't mean that I don't completely exclude the use of water tests. It's just that I've gotten used to reading the living indicators in the aquarium that show the stability of the ecosystem. Next week, I'll tell you about the maintenance of this aquarium. Because I'm sure there are some things you don't know. And I'll show you some tricks I use to help the plants grow. Thank you for being here and helping me continue with this project.